and welcome back. And we're now at part three of this week's New Comics, bitches! So, let's, let's go. Okay, so uh, Angel and Faith, number six. Uh, this is an extremely compelling and shocking read. Uh, especially for fans of the, the characters within this book. Now, you know, I'm not going to get off too much on you know, a tangent here, but you know that I love the world, the Buffyverse. And obviously, Angel and Faith is its offspring of that verse. And of course, Angel was actually I, was a show that I actually preferred to Buffy. Uh, I think Angel is one of the, you know, Buffy is... Buffy is like here, and Angels just is like, you know, just right a little bit here. It's one of the best shows. They're both, so, you know, some of the best shows ever. But Angel is slightly above it, maybe one or two notches. But again, moving along. So, uh, you know, Christus Gage, who I, I have a lot of faith in, he's done some. Uh, he's done some really good work here, in this series as a whole. The issue so far, the the issue that I've liked the most so far was the issue with Harmony. That was a great, that, I loved that issue. Uh, was it, I didn't think too highly of the art for that particular issue, I don't think. I think there was something that was just kind of rubbed me the wrong way about it. But I loved that issue, and this issue I also love. It's just, it's, he, Gage has a really, really, really good handle on how these on who these characters are, how they should you know, their you know the stories, their you know their individual arcs as far as how they've grown, how they've you know, and what's kind of become of them, and you know he just he really hits nail to head on these characters. He's got it. He's got their stuff. He's got everything that makes them good, it, everything that makes them really solid, really well fleshed out characters. Because the whole kind of angel after the fall thing, I just I wasn't following it. I just kind of lost interest after a while, and, and a large part of that was due to the fact that you know, you know, with the uh, with Wes being gone and Gunn being a vampire, and just you know, kind of all the stuff that was going on there. I just this is more of a okay. Well, this is a continuation of this is just kind of uh, you know, this is spring forth more from the Buffy comic rather than it is directly out of the TV world. And that, I think, is where its greatest success is. Is that if it kept just trying to repeat, okay, well, it's the you know, TV show, the TV show, the TV show, and I think that's where Angel After the Fall fell short. And But it's also where Buffy kind of excelled when it was trying to be more like the show. Uh, so, anyway, so... Um, I'm still I'm a little unsure about the character of Giles's father, because again going back to West here, who's my favorite character in all of the Buffyverse, has basically the same kind of father, this real douchebag of a father, you know, this real taskmaster, just a real total, you know, just a real prick. And so I'm a little unsure about how well that goes over, but I have faith. Because this ultimately, I think that's important for, obviously, the arc that hopefully we're going to be following throughout the stretch of this particular arc of issues, now that we're into a new arc here, and that's going to be with going along with how kind of Giles became Ripper, you know, how he, you know, how Ripper Giles became, you know, an anarchic, you know, black magic Worshipper, you know, so I'm, I'm hoping for that and you know, Ethan rain and all that kind of stuff So I mean that that would really you know, and that'd be really good to explore But just as a whole this issue is just wonderful and you know, Rebecca Isaac's art. Wow I mean, it's just it's just gorgeous stuff and it always is her art is just is always terrific So I take it back about the art thing that I said about the harmony issue if that was her uh, because I honestly don't remember what the flaws might have been. I don't even know if there were flaws with that issue. Uh, I think I gave that a 5 out of 5. This is a 4.5 out of 5 for Angel and Faith number 6. Uh, again, you know, just a really, really strong issue. This is much more successful right now than the, the Buffy book. 
And that's because I just think that Christos Gage just has a better handle, has a better grip on what this particular book needs. So that's my, that, that's my thoughts on it. So getting into DC now. Okay, so we're going to start with All-Star Western number five. Yeah, you know, we got Jonah Hex and we got Amadeus Arkham kind of continuing their kind of midnight run mismatched, you know, kind of partner. You got the badass one, you got the kind of fussy bookish one. Uh, you know, their their little adventure uh, deep into the bowels of Gotham City, uh, and you know, and ultimately you know into the underground, excuse me, caves of Gotham City. You know, caves. Caves with bats, big bats, and and Indians, and you know tribes of Indians that are very willing to kill. Uh, and, and as much as I enjoy these two together, uh, the character beats as as well as the dialogue. It's a little bit too formulaic. It, it does adhere a little bit too much to that whole mismatched partner thing and you know like every other word out of hex's mouth to arkham is you know shut up or i'll kill you type of shit you know and you know arkham is always chattering on about i'm scared what about this what about that and you'd think that one of these two guys would have just fucking learned by now it's like okay you know hex would say okay this guy's just going to keep talking i'm just going to draw him out and i'm in an arkham's just say you know maybe i just should shut the fuck up for a while and, you know, and Gray and Palmiati, they're good writers. I mean, they write the shit out of this this stuff. And it's, it's, and it's good. I mean, it's, it's a really good title. I'm glad that it's continuing. I was worried about it for a while, but I'm glad it is continuing. Uh, however, the, uh, the backstory, or the B story, I guess you should say, with uh, the, the Barbary Ghost story, that is wonderfully pulpy stuff. And that is actually what I would actually recommend that more than I would the A story. That's actually where I think this comic really gains momentum. Uh, and is, you know, that's a character that I hope that we continue to see ex being explored throughout this universe, or throughout the, the All-Star Western titles. And who knows, you know, based on the popularity, maybe it'll get some kind of spinoff. I don't know. We have no idea because there's no letters page. There seems to be no letter column in any of the fucking DC books anymore. So I don't know if that's just kind of the imperative of the new 52 or what, but it's something I do I do kind of miss. I would like to see other people's reactions to some of these books. Uh, you know, and, and, and Mortot, Phil Winslade, they do great art. F Phil Winslade's art on, the, again, the B story, the Barbary Ghost story is, I think, a little bit stronger. Uh, but still, just overall, the art's really good. It's a four out of five. Like I said, if it weren't, if it didn't feel a little bit too hackneyed and cliched throughout the Hex story, I would feel better about it. Um, and so now, uh, speaking of kind of cliches, uh, here we are on to Aquaman number five. So Aquaman, we get a little bit of we get a little bit of Empire Strikes Back <laughs> in, in this issue. Uh, and, you know, with, as we get to kind of these new mysteries, now this is very much a, uh, this is, this is kind of, I, I don't know exactly what this particular issue is. It doesn't seem, it seems to be the introduction, sorry, my, my nose is really itchy right now, which is why I'm like thumbing it. I don't, I'm not doing cocaine or anything like that. Uh, so, just math. <laughs> um, oh my God, bugs. Anyway, so, uh, uh. I'm going insane, I know. No, but uh, in all seriousness, folks, uh, this seems to be paving the way. This is more of a, an in-between book, where it's like, okay, here's the, here's the book that is going to lead the way into our next big arc here. And, you know, because we've got all these hints about, okay, well, Atlantis and, you know, kind of the, you know, how it, where, you know, how it, how did it sink in the first place? What the hell happened to it? What was going on? You know, we're, get, we're getting bits of history there. And of course, when we've got Aquaman kind of, you know, you know, he's left, he's in a fucking desert, you know, obviously no water around there. And, you know, he's seeing the visage of his father is basically saying, you know, you're existing between two worlds here. And obviously, we all know, we, we've seen this dynamic play out before. You know, you see something, you know, you see this visage when you're all kind of fucked up in your head. And it's, you know, the, that trope 
is very familiar to us here because what we see here is that we're getting a we're getting something that is obviously it's the, it's the character's own internal struggles are being reflected in something that seems to appear before him and you know is he you know is he destined for the sea or is he destined for land you know it's again there's this there's this conflict going on within arthur curry and that's where i think that's the most interesting thing about this this particular issue uh you know john's is doing really great work on this book i didn't even pick up justice league this week because i'm just uh, i'm sick of it uh <laughs> but um you know i'm just sick of this the total paint by numbers bullshit there but uh you know, he's just doing great work on this title this is really where he's shining uh ivan reese's art Again, terrific, just great stuff. Uh, you know, just, there's some really good character moments. There's some deeper questions that I really want to see answered here. So that with this being kind of paving the way for a future storyline is is good. The very end though was really confusing to me. Uh, it's um, you know, is is Mira is Mira in danger? Or did she actually just go out and get dog food? You know, that was the thing. It was like, okay, why does it? Why does this seem ominous? It doesn't seem. You know, it, it seems. It seems ominous, but I don't know if it should. That's where I was confused. So this is a four out of five. Again, it's a really good read. I have a friend at the comic book shop that's really not liking Aquaman right now, and I'm. I, I want to change his mind about this, but it's just I don't think it's going to be happening anytime soon. But it is really. It's it's a really good read. So. Um, to, again, four out of five, and you know this has been a really on-point series for Jeff Johns. It's really where you know I would think that this would be kind of the title that he would not be bringing his A game to. That it would be much more focused on Justice League or on Green Lantern, for that matter. But where his work is so far in the in the new in the new Fifty Two is really shining. It's here. It's in Aquaman. So with that, you know, that's basically what I have to say about that. Uh, okay, so I'm just trying to think here. What else we got to go over here? Yeah. yeah, okay, I'll leave the last three for the last part. So stay tuned, and we're going to come right back, and we're going to talk about our books of the week. So stay tuned. <laughs> 